Thank you, my Lord, for my seat at the table and your mighty kingdom of light. That's to hold on to my treasures so that nobody can take my crown in heaven. As I stay dressed, ready for service, with my lamp burning and my oil burning and my shield up as I extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy so that you can light your arrows of victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Lawrence Trujillo. This is my story. I was born June 8th, 1987, here in Pueblo, Colorado. And um, I lived here almost all my life. I got two really bad uh, accidents as a kid. Um, I, I have a really bad cut right here on my forehead that my uncle was cutting weeds with like a weed whacker. And I happened to come up behind him. He wasn't. He 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 didn't see me, and it caught me. Whew. And it caught me right on my forehead. I, I, I wasn't the same after that. And I guess that's kind of when you could say I developed the, the speech thing. So my mom went took me to the doctor, put me on a, med on a medication called Ritalin. Throughout school, I always had to go to like special classes. And, all through my life, I always had to go to a speech therapist, and I didn't want to. I it felt uncomfortable. I was kind of embarrassed. I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to be that kid. I had I was prideful, and I didn't want to pay attention to anybody, or listen, or obey, or follow instructions, or I just wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. You know, and then after a while, I quit going to the doctors. I quit going to school. I quit doing all that stuff, and I just started trying to live my my life. And that's when I got involved in drugs and everything. Just I've always smoked weed. Ever since I was really young, I was like maybe 10, 11 years old, and I was always smoking weed. My parents knew I was smoking weed. I I didn't want to take pills, so I figured maybe smoking weed would help me more than my speech. So uh, obviously, it, it, it kind of seemed like it did, but it didn't. And like they say, marijuana is a gateway drug. I got involved with uh, coke and meth, smoking, snorting, and that's for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, coke, meth. That's how. That's what our life was. That's, 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 that's what it was all year round, every day. But when you're on drugs and things like that, bad spirits get to you. Demons get to you. Wickedness gets to you and brings you, brings you down. It makes you feel low. It makes you feel ashamed and you feel guilty. And all this, all this stuff that comes along with, with, with drugs is, 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 is not good. I've been back and forth and in and out of jail at least 10 times. I just couldn't get myself out of the hole. Like, I'd go to jail, try to get clean and stuff, I'd get out, and I'd fall right back into the, 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 the same thing, the same the same pit, because I was following the wrong people. I was trying to be a part of a group I shouldn't have been a part of, and thinking gangs were cool and stuff like that. It wasn't, and it wasn't where I wanted to be. I finally uh, was on my way to go do some bad stuff, and uh, at a place I shouldn't have been even at, they were already waiting for me when I got to the store. I didn't even see nobody when I walked into the store. I didn't see nothing. I was in there putting things in my pocket. The girl was like asking me weird questions and I didn't uh, catch it. And this big old cop comes in. He's like, Mr. Trujillo, you know you're not supposed to be in here, right? And I just turned around and I started running toward, I started running through the store and he came around and the cops were already on the other side. I was running back and forth through the store trying to get out. And then this big old cop, he just kind of, just just jumped on me, boom, just took me down. I went to jail that last time, and uh, and the, the charges that they had on me, it looked like a receipt that you get from Walmart. It was like 15, 20, 30 charges on there. It was like this long. There I sat, I couldn't bond out. My bond was too high. I just, I don't know, I just spent a lot of time on, on my bunk and just thinking about the over things and stuff. I met these two these two guys are my friends. One was named Mr. Freeman, and the other one was the main, and his name was Mr. Bruno. And Mr. Freeman, he took like a special, like kind of interest in me. Uh, you know, he, he told me that, you know, the Lord, he really likes you. He taking a special interest in you. And I didn't know what he was telling me. Wow, like, I didn't know how house to, to go about it so I decided to sit with him and he uh, 
And he, the first scripture he showed me was uh, was uh, Matthew 6, 33. my God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. I went upstairs and I prayed and I asked God to like, you know, to forgive my sins and because he was also telling me more stuff like how to go about it. So I started to, uh, okay, I was like, all right, I'll go try this, you know, so. And it's already been like three or four weeks already. And uh, I was really pressing in to the Lord. I was really pressing into the Lord. And then I started getting sick. I started getting like sick, like maybe like, for not having food, maybe withdrawal. For like a whole week, I, I was fighting and turning and trying to stay focused on my reading with the Lord and, and just trying to fight whatever was going on with me. I, I couldn't have, I couldn't take it anymore. I was going through a so bad of a withdrawals or changing in my body. In the middle of the night, I'm over there praying to the Lord, like, please help me, please help me, Jesus, please help me through this, please help me through this. I'm laying, on, I'm laying there on, on the, the edge of my bunk, just kind of like looking up, and I'm looking at the lights, and the lights are like, to me, it was, to me, it was like flickering really fast really flickering real fast and like, I started like shaking and trembling. I could feel like my hands and my head just like, like I was going to explode or something. And all of a sudden I seen like this, 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 this like golden glow come out of nowhere. And I'm reaching for the glow. And all of a sudden it happened. It was like a, it was like a pulling and a tearing of my flesh apart from me, from, from myself. I thought I was dying and I'm pulling it and the lights are flickering. And out of the corner of my eye, I feel it. And it just pulls out of me. And it flings out of me. And it hits the wall. And it's like a little three foot creature type thing. And it grabs the towel off the side of the wall, grins at me, crawls over the wall, into the next cell, and busts out the light in the next cell over. Boom! And all the lights flickered in the whole complex, the thing that we were at. And as, as I'm laying there, I fainted. <sighs> and when I woke up the next morning, I couldn't believe what I saw. I was like, I thought I didn't even think I was me anymore. I looked up and I, I wasn't sick. I wasn't feel. I felt good. He turned my heart from stone uh, to flesh, and I was just changed. I was changed miraculously, overnight, miraculously overnight, changed forever. Every night I'd be praying on my bed, this and that. I started a little prayer group and I started, you know, people started coming to me asking for, for, for to pray over them so that they could go home. When I was in jail, I got this Bible that I use right here each and every day for the last four and a half years that I have been clean and sober. Uh, this is my, this is my sword. I don't, you know, I, this is, I, I, I bought this sword for $10 worth of phone time and 10 soups. It, the love just was where, the, the love came with me through all this stuff that I was going through. And yes, I was still in, in, in jail and, and it's this and that, but I was singing and we were hanging out and this and this, just, just like Paul and Silas were still bound and changed, but they were still giving praise to the Lord no matter what, you know? The people were just around me, just, whoa, 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 were just were just amazed at like how I was, carrying myself, you know, even though I was always, I was still in there. Everybody was like, Lawrence, you don't have nothing to be happy. Why are you so happy? I was like, because I got God with me now, bro. I'm telling you. And they were like, they were just amazed at how I was acting, you know? I even keep these these uh, these things. When I first started to write to the Lord, it says, I had, thank you, Father. Please have, I may walk out those doors and not return. And I'll do good. I love you, Father. I trust you in Jesus' name. And just by simple little things like that, it's how I began to develop a prayer study for myself. By reading the Word of God, doing a study, and I always keep these on me to remember how far I come. I got, you know, when I got out, I didn't talk to nobody. For the very first night, I started to pray in my mom's back room. My mom and them were all freaking out at me like, What's Lawrence doing back there? What's Lawrence doing back there? But they would come and see me, and you know, I would see me there on my hands and knees, you know. And that's how I've I've always I've always been, I've, uh, you know. And that's the way I've always prayed, always pray in the morning, always pray at night, and always stay in that same sink. I always gotta make sure I get my I'm in with the Lord because that is what's most important between my Father and me. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has not ever once failed me on my journey. A 2023 was the best year I have ever had in my whole life. I accomplished so much. I got so much done. I served in so much around the, the church. And I see how, how the Lord has brought me to a good family, to a good church. And the Lord gets, gets all the praise. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the love, all my heart, you know? And because of my speech, you know, I, I, because of my speech, I felt unworthy to follow the Lord, like how Moses was, you know? He kept telling the Lord, no, Lord, I, I, I don't know if I, can, if I can. He kept, you know, the, and the Lord said, no, I want, you know, I, I, I want to use you. So no matter what age, no matter what I have done, the Lord could always put, put you to use for Him, to do something good, to accomplish great things. And accomplishing great things is what I plan to do, you know? I'm very grateful, very thankful for what the Lord has done for me in my life, and uh, the best is yet to come.